lovely people, my name is Nicole and today I am going to talk to you about all the books I read in March. There are quite a few of them so I'm gonna try and go through this as fast as possible so this video isn't 20 minutes long so let's just jump right into it. So the first book I read this month was Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver and I'd actually picked this one up a little bit before and couldn't really get into it, put it down and never had the motivation to pick it back up but I was really bored one day and just felt like reading something contemporary and so I picked this up and I am so so glad I did. This starts off as sort of a generic contemporary some tragic accident happened and they're dealing with the aftermath kind of thing and then it quickly evolves into this really dark mystery that I found really really interesting and the ending absolutely blew my mind. I won't say anything about it beyond that because I don't want to spoil it for anyone else but if you like the sort of mess with your mind mystery kind of thing then I would recommend this book. I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I read Lux Consequences which contains Opal and Origin and these are the third and fourth books in the Lux series by Jennifer L. L. Armentrout and I love this series. It feels like comfort food in book form. It's a solid paranormal romance. This is what I go to when I just need something that, even if I haven't read it before, feels familiar. Because yeah, it's a little cheesy, but I like a little cheesy. Um, I felt like these installments were really really good, kept me on the edge of my seat. It was definitely the kind of thing where the second I finished the first one, I immediately started reading the second one. These books are definitely addictive. I love them so much and I love Katie and Damon's relationship. I feel like even amongst all the chaos and crazy alien stuff that's going on, they still manage to have moments where they're just being cute and enjoying each other's presence and it just feels like a breath of fresh air amidst all the other craziness. I gave both Opal and Origin four stars. Then I read Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This book so good. I desperately need the next one in the series. This was the kind of book that I cannot stop thinking about it. I cannot get these characters out of my head because Cassandra Clare is amazing and I love her so very much. She's such an incredible writer. I thought the sort of mystery aspect of this was really interesting. I loved having a protagonist that grew up in the Shadowhunters world because for her previous two series we had protagonists who were being introduced to the Shadow world in the books and in this one Emma's already there. She already knows what's going on. She already has her parabatai and she's already kicking ass. I loved Emma. She reminded me a little bit of Jace in a lot of ways and Julian I'm just in love with Julian, period. He's the super sweet artist type. How could you not fall in love with that? But I am so, so rooting for them. And there were just a number of twists and turns in this story that kept me on the edge of my seat. And I loved every single second of this. From the moment I got this book in the mail, on the day it came out, I pretty much read straight through until I finished. I had to break for a class at one point, but other than that, read straight through. It was like eight or nine hours of just solid reading and it was worth every single second. I gave it five stars. Then I read Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This I read for a class on magical realism, which this isn't actually magical realism, it's dystopian. But I really enjoyed this. I thought the prose was absolutely beautiful and the storyline was in, was really interesting. There were a number of different storylines sort of weaving in with each other that all came together at the end with a number of different points of view, some of which I enjoyed more than others. I wasn't as big of a fan of Jeevan's point of view and I felt like Clark's didn't really get interesting until about the 200 page mark, 250 maybe. But I really enjoyed Kirsten and Miranda's points of view the whole way through. I also really liked that it was a dystopian novel that didn't focus on the chaos of whatever like apocalypse there is or like revolution or these big dramatic things. It was focusing on the, how the world is sort of rebuilding itself and how society is once it's settled after this big chaotic catastrophic event. And I thought that was a really really interesting take on the genre. I gave it four stars. Then I read Lumberjanes Volume 3, A Terrible Plan, 
and I liked this. I didn't like it quite as much as the previous two volumes, but it's still Lumberjanes and the series just in general is hilarious and adorable. I just felt like not as much happened in the big overall plot in this one. It felt like the main overall story arc of this volume could have been contained to a single episode and didn't really need the whole like four or five that it took. But like I said, it was still enjoyable and I still love it because it's Lumberjanes and I can't not love Lumberjanes. So I gave it four stars. Then I read Milk and Honey by Ruby Cower. This is a poetry collection that has a lot of mostly really really short and absolutely stunning poetry. Uh, lots of like feminist messages and discussion of like relationships and love. Lots of stuff about dealing with trauma and learning to love yourself. It's so good. I went through and tabbed all my favorites and as you can probably see there are a lot of them. Ruby Cower just has this way with words where even if the poem is only like two lines long it packs a punch and it's absolutely incredible. If you only pick up one volume of poetry in your life, pick up this one. It's so good. I gave it five stars. Next, I picked up Lux Opposition, which also contains the short story Shadows by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and this is the end of the Lux series. I loved this ending. I felt like it was probably the best book in the series. Things just kept getting better and better and better. I felt like everything was wrapped up really well. It didn't feel like it was wrapping up too easily because that is one of the things that frustrates me a lot in books when things just feel like they wrap up really easily with no real struggle but that definitely did not happen in this. And also I really appreciated the fact that, that you know how there are those moments in books where characters are being stupid and you just kind of want to slap them? I didn't have to feel like that because we had our main character who was really, who did a really good job of being a voice of reason a lot of the time and slapped people for me. Like I said earlier about the previous books in this series, I love this series. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it if you want a good solid paranormal romance. I gave it five stars. And the short story Shadows about how Dawson and Beth met was absolutely adorable. So, so, so cute. <laughs> then I read Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Moldovsky. I actually have a full video review on this, which I will link in the doobly-doo, so I'm not gonna say too much. I gave it 3.5 stars. It was sort of a dark humor satire thing, but I felt like a lot of times it was teetering on the edge of whether or not it actually was sort of pushing far enough to become satire or whether it was just absolutely like ridiculous. But I did enjoy it, I did think it was really funny at times, so if you want more in-depth thoughts about this, link in the description to the full video review. Then I read So You Want to Be a Jedi by Adam Gidwitz. This is a adaptation of The Empire Strikes Back, and I was really excited to read this because it's Star Wars and I love Star Wars. And I loved Alexander Bracken's adaptation of A New Hope, which is in sort of the same series as this one. This one didn't quite do it for me. It's written in this really interesting style where it's in second person and you, the reader, are being taught how to be a Jedi and the way this narrator is teaching you how to do that is by having you pretend that you're Luke Skywalker. It was just kind of a really weird format that I like appreciate the thought behind it. I just think it didn't quite work in this context. And there are a lot of phrases and words that are just common vernacular in like modern day that felt really anachronistic in the context of Star Wars. I didn't absolutely hate it. There were a lot of moments that I found really funny and enjoyable, but the format just didn't work for me, so I gave it two stars. Then I read For Teenage Girls with Wild Ambitions and Trembling Hearts by Clementine Von Radix. This is actually just a single poem and I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend you take a look at this. I think the full poem is actually online. I will find a link and put it in the doobly-doo if you want to read it. I just loved it so much that I wanted to pick up a hard copy, so it's beautiful. Five stars, of course. Then I read A History of Notable Shadowhunters and Denzians of the Downworld as told in the language of flowers, written by Cassandra Clare, illustrated by Cassandra Jean. If you are a fan of the Shadowhunters universe, I highly recommend you put this, you pick this up. It is absolutely beautiful. They have flower cards as drawn by Sandra Jean. Oh look, I opened up to one of my favorite pages. It's church! Yeah, church and charm and meow have flower cards. It's beautiful. Um, so flower cards by Cassandra Jean that sort of say something about each character 
and then a short little bio written by Cassandra Clare. It's so beautiful, so wonderful. You can only get it on Topatico. I will put a link in the doobly-doo, but it, it's wonderful, and it just made me happy, so five stars. <laughs> then I read Because You'll Never Meet Me by Leah Thomas, or should I say, tried to read. I actually DNF'd this. Uh, I don't know whether I should include a DNF in my wrap-up, but it's my video, so I'm gonna do it. Um, I just wasn't a huge fan of this. Just based on the description, I went in hoping it would be a queer, kind of star-crossed, long-distance romance. It wasn't. Um, so there was that disappointment. And then also, I just didn't like the two main characters at all. I didn't find them particularly interesting. One of them I actually found really pretentious and annoying. So I got about 100 pages in and just had no interest in continuing. Also, by that 100 pages, nothing really had happened. So I just figured, you know what? I'm not enjoying it. Why keep reading it? And then I read a series, which, an entire series, which may be in competition with Lady Midnight for my favorite books of the month. That is the All for the Game series by Nora Sakovic. I have an entire review for this whole series. I will link it in the doobly-doo, but the first book is The Foxhole Court. So I liked The Foxhole Court. I really, really did. I just, it wasn't mind-blowingly amazing, but I did really enjoy it. Uh, I gave it 4.5 stars. I just hadn't really gotten that attached to the characters at that point. Then The Raven King broke me. I absolutely fell hard for every single char main character in this book. The main villain enraged me. The main character made me want to hug him, like, to death. And I gave that one five stars. And then The King's Men, that, that was just, blew me out of the water. It's so good. This is one of the series that I will recommend to everyone, with one sort of asterisk, and that is there is a lot of sort of sensitive content in this. There's a lot of discussion of sexual assault, physical and emotional abuse, and lots of really violent, gory scenes. So if you are not someone who wants to read those kinds of things, don't pick this up. But other than that, read this series. It's so, so, so good. I cannot recommend it enough. The first book is free on Kindle and iBooks, and the other two are only a dollar. They're not, however, available in print, but please go read this series. And the last book I read this month was a comic book, and that was Miss Marvel Volume 3, Crushed. I really liked this volume. I felt like the first story and the last story felt a little random and kind of thrown in there. They didn't really have anything to do with the other stories in the book. The first story was just sort of a random battle with Loki, and the last story was just a comic that featured Kamala from the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series. So they felt kind of just like randomly thrown in there. The art style changed with the last one that totally threw me off. But the story in the middle was super good. Really, really, really interesting. I love seeing Kamala go and kick ass. She's so wonderful and I adore her. I gave this four stars. So those are all the books I read in March. Please, if you've read any of these, tell me what you thought of them in the comments. I love you and I will see you later. Bye!